it's very, very fresh me reacting to this video. Every day that you breathe has been a miracle. This is hard for me to say this, but it's, it's, it's true. I just felt really frustrated at them, angry even. I just wanted to unsubscribe. Hey everybody, I am Kelly and this is my channel Incredible Anyway where I talk about how to live an incredible life no matter what your circumstances are. If you are new here, very welcome to you. I am a person who has chronic health issues and disability and I talk about how I navigate my life. I have a service dog that has given me incredible independence and so I share about him as well. I like to talk very vulnerably and direct about my life and my experiences because I wish that other people would talk to me that way so that I know that I'm not alone and I know that if I'm going through something, likely somebody else out there, one of you all is as well. And I really wanna share something that I'm going through right now that's hard for me. And I'm not gonna tie a bow on it. I never tie bows on things. I do believe in having a balanced look at life. I do believe that it's important to realize that there is suffering and we have to acknowledge that and accept it. We just can't live there. I also believe that it's important to acknowledge the joy in life, that that is real and to focus on it, but not to focus on it so much that we don't acknowledge any other part of life and, and live in this disingenuous place. I just watched a video on a vlog channel that I have watched since 2016. I saw this video come up and I clicked it immediately and I have a lot of mixed feelings about it that I'm going to share. Uh, but just to give you a little bit of background on how I found this vlogging channel, I found them because they, and I really connected with them because they had some things that were similar to my experience at the time when I found them. Uh, they are a married couple and the wife has chronic health issues that in the past have been looked at as terminal. I'm not, they're probably still considered terminal. Uh, but in the last couple years, they have had a lot of significant and progress in the medical treatments that have come out for her specific disease. But the video initially that I found them doing was the video that they talked about where they had talked about their decision to not have children because of her health issues. And I really connected with that because that was a decision that I had made. Uh, I was married at the time and ultimately came to this decision that while well, a parent is the thing that I have wanted to do over any other job in the entire world. It was not something that fit in with my life, being a person that's disabled by chronic health issues over the last 15 and a half years. And I knew that it wouldn't be fair to the child in my situation specifically. I'm not saying that nobody with disability or chronic health issues should parent. That is definitely an individual perspective, but with my specific health issues, I knew that it wouldn't be something that would be good for me or my spouse at the time or the child. And so I, it was a very, very hard and painful decision, but it was ultimately a decision that I'm, I'm glad that I came to. I'm glad for multiple reasons. One of them is that obviously my marriage ended and I'm glad that I didn't bring a child into that, uh, really unfortunate situation of my marriage. You know, I had a miscarriage very early on, many, many years ago. I also, um, when migraine was the only thing, and I hate to say only because it's such a significant disability, but it was the one thing that was disabling me, I had this period of time where it had really improved and it was really exciting. And at the time, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going back to what was my normal because I wasn't always disabled. I worked as a speech language pathologist for three to five year olds and loved it and had to stop that because of my health issues. And so I, you know, was excited that perhaps I would get to go back to being a, a typically healthy individual and I was looking forward to parenting, which is, as I said, the job I wanted. My husband at the time and I started the adoption process and we were going through an open adoption agency, which means that the birth parents choose the family they place their child into. We went through a lot of classes, a lot of background checks. We had a lot of interviews. We 
did all the things. It was a lot of work and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to do it. And we were right close to putting together our portfolio to put into this big binder at the time. This is how they did it. And birth parents would go through the binder and that's how they would choose their family to place their child. And so was really, really excited at this prospect of having a child and becoming a parent. And unfortunately, that is when I developed the symptoms and ultimately was diagnosed with Meniere's disease. And if you've watched any of my videos on Meniere's, you know it's completely debilitating. When I'm having an attack, studies have shown that a person with Meniere's disease when they're having an attack, has the quality of life and is as disabled as a person who has cancer or AIDS and is six days from death. So it's a pretty debilitating place to be whenever I have these attacks. And so it just was not something that I could bring a child into. It was just completely impossible to continue with that. And so that ended for me and I had to move on to a place of grieving. It was very, very painful for me whenever I saw families with children, especially on one vacation in particular, there was, it was a Disney World and I was in a wheelchair and we were being transported by boat somewhere and they had a place on the boat for people with wheelchairs, but that's also where they put the people with strollers. And uh, that was very, very hard to be face to face with children and strollers all around me when I was feeling this significant loss of not being able to be the parent, even though it was something that I knew wouldn't likely happen in my life. It wasn't really until the last few years that I've really realized, you know what, this is not something that I really can have in my life. And even as I've been dating and, and looking at, you know, what do I want in a person, I have chosen to not date men with young kids or, you know, widowers with kids. I feel like it would be a very selfish thing of me to do. It's something that's been very painful for me, but it's where I am in my life right now. I had to grieve it. I had to go through the grieving process. And, and, and so here I am. And watching this, this video that is on this vlogging channel, and I don't know this couple personally, although you know when you watch vlogging channels, you usually feel like you know the person personally because you get to know so many aspects of their life. And I'm not a person that likes to fangirl. I, I just, I like authenticity and I like genuine connection and that's not going to happen when you're a fan of somebody. So I don't reach out to people unless I feel like I have something of you know importance that could actually help them in their health journey, that information to give them, but otherwise I'm not trying to connect with them on a personal level. But I do genuinely care about them and have for a very long time, especially because for a period of time I felt like my life was, was similar in some ways to theirs. So today I saw this video from them and they announced that they're adopting. And considering going back to how I found them, which was this video of, you know, them saying that they're not going to be having children and really identifying and feeling, wow, it's nice to know that there's another couple out there like me and feeling, feeling so connected to that. On one hand, I felt so much joy for them, so much love and gratitude that this is something coming into life. I think that more than probably most people, I understand the depths of joy this must bring to them because they didn't expect to have children and because this was such an unanticipated thing and the fact that her, her health has been stable for the last two years because of this new drug that came out on the market and just... I am, I am over the moon happy for them. Like my joy is just so big because I can put myself in their shoes and I know how big my joy would be. So getting to see that this is something unexpected that they're just walking into and, and super, super happy. I mean, just seeing their joy was unlike anything that I could really put into words. It just was so exciting. And on the same time, this is hard for me to say this, but it's, it's, it's true. I was so frustrated and I, my frustration 
in that moment was directed toward them. I didn't understand it. I wasn't analyzing it. I just felt really frustrated at them, angry even. And this is where I had to step back and go, whoa. And I think this is where probably a lot of people need to step back and go, whoa, when they're watching videos, because I think we all watch videos through our own perspective. And I know from being a video creator and getting so many unfortunate comments uh, that are not so nice, um, that people often are speaking out of their own hurt. And hurt people hurt people. I know I have as a hurt person. I have hurt other people and unintentionally. and. So, you know, I know that that happens and, and I, I don't respond to, to hateful comments um, because I know it's not about me. Um, but that's actually, I think, what gave me insight in that moment of going, oh wait, why am I frustrated with them? <laughs> that makes no sense. That makes no sense, right? I, I could be frustrated with them, but is that really what my frustration is about? And, and, and I can't even justify, I can't even say like what I could be frustrated about that has anything to do with their story or what they shared. And granted, it was a very short video. They said that they're gonna be coming out of the longer video where they're gonna talk more about stuff. Um, where of course, like I haven't seen that yet in real time. Um, but there is no reason for me to be frustrated. Like I said, in fact, I would be a person that would be more excited than anybody because I exactly know, I know in my gut, I know in my gut how exciting this is. I know in my gut how much joy and anticipation and build up they must be feeling about this change, this, this wonderful thing that's coming in their life. And yet I felt like mad. I just wanted to unsubscribe. Sometimes our feelings about other people's situations may actually be feelings about our situation. It's frustrating for me that I'm not a parent. Um, I have so much love to give. I step back and I realize, you know what, this is not about them. My frustration is about my life and my life circumstances and the fact that their joy is reflecting back to me what I'm missing and what I wish I had, you know. I wish I had chosen better <laughs> my first husband. I wish that I had made different decisions. I wish that I was in a different situation so that I could have children. And those are not the case. It's so strange, right, to have that dichotomy. And I'm sure you guys have experienced that too, where you are so incredibly happy for somebody else and you feel the pain of what you're going through. I actually remember at my wedding, uh, somebody who had attended my wedding was quite a bit older than me, maybe twice my age at the time, and had never been married and really wanted that relationship. And I, I knew that going to weddings was hard for her. I really felt for her because I knew that she was happy for me, but at the same time didn't have that in her life. My joy was emphasizing her hurt. And that wasn't meaning that I should take away from my joy or should try to diminish it or whatever. It just meant that I was aware of it. When we see other people going through stuff that we want to go through, we're excited. And then I think it also highlights the fact that we don't have that. And I think that's why it's so hard, is I'm seeing the joy that they have, and I know that I'm never going to have that about you know having a baby. I'm never going to have children. And I think that that happens to all of us. I think that, you know, whether it is a relationship or a financial situation or a job or children or, you know, a vacation or a life circumstance, whatever it is, there's so many things that we could be wanting for ourselves. And maybe it isn't jealousy. It's just, I wish that I had that and I'm sad I don't and I'm frustrated I don't and it hurts that I don't. And then when we see somebody else have it, we feel those frustrations, but it can be so easily directed toward those people. Like, they get to go on the vacation. I don't want to see their photos. I don't want to celebrate that with them. It would be really unfortunate if I took out my frustration about my own life on this couple that is having this beautiful, joyful experience. It would be horrible if I said something really cruel in the comments because I'm frustrated about my life. I'm frustrated about my situation. That would be me acting out of my hurt. I guess this is me consciously saying, I'm not gonna do that. 
Uh, not that I would, but it, you know, even in my heart, you know, if I'm doing it in my heart, it's gonna affect who I am, regardless of if I say it out loud to somebody else or not. And that would be ultimately my then needing to decide, right, like, how do I deal with this? Because I need to deal with my grief and not take it out on them. So what boundaries do I need to set to protect myself, but also to protect other people? And maybe in the circumstance, I needed to unsubscribe from this couple's YouTube channel to protect myself, not out of a hateful thing or spiteful thing, but to say, mm, maybe it's not going to be an easy journey for me. Or maybe I will be able to reframe it and go, I want to live vicariously through them. I am not going to get this, this joy that they have and I'm going to live it through them. But I have to decide what's right for me. And I think it's important I take care of myself and give myself compassion and realize, oh my gosh, this is a really hard thing that I was in such a terrible situation with the person that I ultimately chose to marry. This situation of not being able to have children is such a hard and painful situation. And I need to, to really give myself compassion and empathy for that. Not live there, not live in being a victim, because that's not healthy, but just acknowledging it and acknowledging that, okay, that sucks. That's really hard. I, I have a hard situation there. Okay, and accepting that and acknowledging it as that suffering piece, but then also, you know, being, finding what I do have and can be grateful for. So I'm not trying to put a bow on this because there is no bow to put on this. There's there's no like, let's make this look pretty and perfect. I don't, I don't believe that that's healthy. I don't think that we should do that because, you know, ultimately this is, this is my reality. I would love that my health would be healed and my disabilities would go away and that I, I, I could be a parent that I had married a different man and those are not the case. That is the truth. And I'm not gonna try to make this look pretty because it's not. What I can do about the situation is take care of myself and make sure, of course, that I don't lash out at somebody um, that is going through something that I wish I were going through and frustrated that I'm not. Um, and I think in my situation, I'm gonna be able to turn it around uh, and ultimately enjoy their journey vicariously through them. At the same time, I'm going to still appreciate what I do about my life without children and without a significant other right now. It's okay to feel those feelings of frustration. It's just important that I remember what it really is about and that's not really about the fries, this vlogging couple. It's about my own situation, sorry, that's the puppy. My parents' puppy I'm watching. I'd love to hear how you go through your own circumstances. Is there something that you find is painful to watch when other people go through it? Um, you have a hard time having joy for them because it's something that you're missing in your own life and how do you deal with that? How do you take care of yourself in that situation? Or maybe not, maybe you don't deal with it well. You know, I know that I didn't deal with it well earlier today. Um, and very, very happy wishes to Mary and Peter Fry in this journey of adoption. All the love and joy and all the things to you. I'm so excited for you. Soak up every single moment. Praying for you guys. I am Kelly. You are not alone. And uh, go find that incredible anyway. Can you battle through the darkness? That is lying to your soul And find the strength to carry on Relinquishing control